first record that we really went full out with a concept, making a, a big piece of music that flows into one another. The easy thing to do would have been like another live DVD like we did with Colors, but we really wanted to strip that element out of it. To me especially, it's a very studio album. Uh, we've always been fans of DVDs where it's just the band, you know, you don't have any other distractions. It's just like, if you want to watch drums, there's drums. If you want to watch the guitar player, there's the guitar player. And nowadays with, you know, the internet, you can, you can pretty much watch any of our shows anytime, any day. And, you know, we wanted to give the fans something that made them feel a little closer to us, made it almost feel like they were at practice with us. With the live setting, you know, we kind of beefed up our show this time around to where we had, you know, a crazy program light show, we had video stuff. I think there was something about wanting to kind of do the opposite of that to really make it as organic as possible. I mean, the interaction with a crowd is great. The energy is great when you play to a crowd and record it. It's, it's awesome. But in this setting, we're able to kind of strip all that out of it and focus on just the music. I just thought it was like a cool idea, you know, you can kind of see, you're not, you're not blocked by any scrims or anything, you know, you can see like what gear we're playing, you know, the, the guitars, and kind of just like what it looks like when we're playing it, you know, what it looks like when we jam. The recording, uh, we didn't do a lot of, uh, didn't really do much, any editing other than uh, some noise stripping, things like that. They weren't, they were adamant about preserving the, the natural performance, you know, and there's some mess ups in there. There's like channel change, you know, noises and, and things like that that obviously you wouldn't, you know, you normally wouldn't let slide on a, re, you know, a studio recording or whatever. But, you know, personally, and I think, the, you know, the band feels the same way. If, you know, if you're going to call it a live DVD, it needs to be a live DVD. It, we just thought it was something new for us and, and, you know, it's something that you don't really see a lot of metal bands do. So we thought it was a good opportunity to kind of push the envelope a little bit and and, and try something different. I think at this point, <clears throat> with our music and anything we do, we're just, you know, we're keeping ourselves motivated and trying new things. And, you know, sometimes they can become very stressful and sometimes, but they all in the end, like really work out and make us want to push to do new things in the future. From day one, we've never been the kind of band that before we start writing, we set out to do something in particular. Like, you know, with every record, we're like, let's get together and write and see what happens. We don't really have any go-to bag of tricks or anything like that. We're trying to figure out, well, how can that, you know, blend into this, and how can that go into that, and now we're dealing with a story and moods and settings. It's kind of cool. It was a good way to, like, lay it out for us. For the Parallax 2, it was kind of fun doing that because since it was a concept record, it was a good way for us to use that as a tool to organize the record musically. I think just the older we got, you know, we became better players, we became better as a group of people. It was just a natural transition in a way. And, and as far as me writing lyrics, I, I felt like just every record it was getting closer and closer to needing more storylines rather than you know, back in the day I would write personal lyrics, you know, where now I try to incorporate a lot of personal emotion into a character or, or things I'm talking about because I, I enjoy, like, having that connection with things I write. I think just the music calls for a story. It's something we've always talked about doing. You know, we, we always incorporate that world into our music anyway. And we're like, Now's the time to do it. If we're gonna have people come and play it, let's, let's do it with this this shoot. You know, we have this beautiful studio that sounds amazing and everything. And to the idea of just running samples from a from a Pro Tools you know track just seemed like a total disservice to the to the process. So we wanted to have you know people come in here and actually play the parts. So you know, the string quartet came in and played some stuff. We had a tuba. We had a saxophone. Uh, clarinet, flute. You know, all, all the stuff that we do, nothing sampled. It's real drums, it's real guitars. We don't record anything half speed or do any crazy editing or anything like that. Like we, we try and make it uh, who we are, you know, make it as real as possible. A lot of you know the charts I had written up for the record, and um, when it came time to do this, it just it seemed 
like that that just made sense that fit in with what our plan was you know stripping it down doing it more organic the parts are there and they're gonna be there so why not have people play them I'd never actually arranged you know the parts for for a string quartet before so you know learning the you know placing the, the viola and tenor clef and, and just making sure that um, you know all the notes are written in the right octaves and this and that you know just because of the range of the instruments that that was a new challenge but you know, it was fun having all the you know other musicians come in and stuff like that I mean that's kind of like a lifelong goal for anybody who's serious about playing music but at the same time I feel like it's gonna be something really cool to own for someone who loves Between the Barrier. Jamie, check, check, Jamie. As soon as the camera's on, as soon as the, the audio's recording, I get weird, I'm like... <laughs> Jamie King, I think at this point, we just consider him part of the band. We've always felt comfortable with him. You don't feel like you're recording, you feel like you're hanging out. You know, we've, we've done things here and there without him and it just felt wrong, it's weird. He's helped us evolve as a band, as far as playing live and in the studio. He's kind of one of those guys that pushes us. Jamie has the kind of inhuman quality of being able to know exactly what we're doing as he's hearing it or before he's heard it. Between the Barrier to Me sound to me is Between the Barrier to Me. My personal take on a, a great sounding record is a record it's clean and clear, and produced to, a, a, to an extent or whatever, but it, it's like an idealized translation of what the band does. We always find ourselves coming back to Jamie because he really is the only guy we've worked with that gets what we're trying to do musically. No matter how weird the material might be, he, he's into it. Some of our stuff can be pretty extreme and off the wall, and um, I've found that some, some people just don't understand it, or they're just kind of like, why? <laughs> you know. I had the idea of adding some percussive element to, on top of a layer of drums. And I think it's a little too too much, it's too quirky. He's like, oh, he's the guy that's like, oh no, man, that's awesome. In fact, you should do this on top of that, and this on top of that, you know, it's like, he's the guy that says, you know, you do some crazy lead. He's like, okay, cool, harmonize that. Okay, harmonize that again. <laughs> Parallax 2 was much like the other records. Uh, you know, they came in, they had some new gear, trial and error on all the tones, you know. Uh, it's working great, you know. So kind of, it's not broke, don't fix it kind of thing. You know? um, and it's funny because, you know, those early records that we did with him were essentially recorded live. I mean, in his in his parents' basement, you know, um, with, you know, microphone bleed, you know, guitars bleeding into drum mics and everything. So this situation is, is kind of almost like a throwback to that, you know. We're kind of doing the same thing. It's just in a nicer place and sounds better and all that stuff and we're hopefully better players and everything but um, it's kind of the same sort of thing so it's all everything's kind of come full circle I guess. We'll be writing hopefully the rest of the year later in the year and depending on how that goes then we'll figure out when we're going to record but we, we try to not ever force too much just because we believe that that can cause a bad record. So we, we want things to be very natural with us. When the time comes, uh, we'll get together and just kind of see what happens, you know? We never have a plan for anything, you know, as far as what it's gonna sound like. We haven't had much time in between tours, this whole um, cycle for the Parallax, but, um, but pretty much any time I'm home, I'm writing music, you know? What group that falls in, um, you know, is unknown, but I, I, ha I, I, I have heaps of new material and I'm sure we'll start sharing soon. I think this band will always be a progressive band, for sure. I, uh, we're, we just love way too many different styles of music to just stick to one, <laughs> one genre. Whether it be heavy or whatever, it's going to be, you know, it'll still be between the barriers. I think we'll probably maybe do another concept. It uh, just feels right. Um, it was fun, you know, for me it was something totally new. I didn't know if I would like it or not, and I actually really enjoyed it, writing in a, in a totally new way. But um, I'm personally ready to move beyond space and find something new to talk about.
So I don't have anything more to say. The story's over. Goodbye to everything.